Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm working with a horse here named Truist, and he tends to be a little bit goosey around things touching his rib cage, his flank area, tightened up the inside of his hind leg. So um, I wanna show you a quick technique on how to release a horse to being touched there. So it's easy kind of for human nature to get direct line and just kind of reach there and touch him and just say, hey, just be okay with it. Um, but what I would like to do is ask him to do something else that requires him to move his feet and work a little bit, and then I'll release him back to that. Um, another goal that the owner had uh, for me while I'm working with him is to ground tie. So I'm kind of going to be, um, you know, killing two birds with one stone here um, will be the idea that I, when I release him to touching him there, he's also going to be standing still. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. And actually what we'll do first is let's just establish a little bit of a baseline of where he's at with touching him. So I'm gonna to try to be safe when I do this, but I know he can kind of kick out when things touch him. So let's just kind of see um, what his response is. So you can see he kind of tightened up and you can kind of see him threatening to kick there. Um, I'm not gonna do it anymore. I think you guys get the idea. So, so we're gonna go ahead and put him to work, which is also why I have a stick and a flag so that I don't have to reach my hand there uh, quite so much. Now, when I move him around here, um, he just came out of the stall, and so I need to move his feet and let him warm up, but I'm not trying to work him. When we talk about, um, when I talk about releasing him to me touching him, it's not like I'm gonna work, move his feet and work him here, and then he'll let me touch him. It's actually pressure. I have to put pressure on him here to make the pressure of me petting him on his belly seem better, seem like relief, okay? So it's not work. Because um, also this horse is an endurance horse and we'd be out here for a really long time if I was trying to use work and get him tired. He's not gonna get tired. So, so we're not using that, it's about pressure. So, and when I talk about adding pressure, you're gonna notice that it's kinda come to come from my, my body and my flag being noisy and that sort of thing. So um, let's just warm him up here a little bit. <clears throat> Move his feet. You know, whenever I have to kind of tackle a tougher subject with a horse, I also try to use what I would call a sandwich effect. So, you know, I don't want to pull him out of his pen and just go right for it. I want to do something that's a little easier, a little softer, and then to kind of work, work up to that part where I am doing the thing that he, he kind of doesn't like and put that in the middle and then go back to some easier stuff on the ends. And that just make, gets the horse to just look forward to being worked with a little bit more um, than they would if, if I just kind of went right for it. It's kind of like you're about to have a tough conversation with another person and you walk up and you at least say, hey, good morning, how are you today? You know, instead of launching into, hey, remember when you did this thing and it irritated me? You know, basic, uh, basic skills here. So he seems pretty happy to move his feet. So now I'm gonna add a little bit of pressure, okay? So I'm gonna move the flag and I'm, I'm bringing my life up and I'm just gonna pressure him until he stops reacting to the flag, okay? I, I don't really care if he's reacting to the flag. That's not like really what I'm going for here. I just want him to challenge it. Now he's trying to stop. So now I'm gonna release him. And when I release him, I'm gonna pet him where he didn't like to be pet. Kind of like when you're a kid and you're doing, you're sitting in the back seat with your sibling. And you're like, I'm not touching you. <laughs> you're just getting closer. I don't know. It reminded me of that for some reason. So I'm touching him, but you still, I immediately didn't get a reaction because he was in a better state of mind to receive that that feel, that information right there. Okay. So that was on that side. Let's go ahead and try this side. So I'll put him on a circle first. And we're gonna find lots of ways to do that throughout the week. So this technique I'm using with a flag, you could do this at home, but I want you to also understand there's a bigger picture of like, you could do this with handling their feet, touching their face, bridling them. I mean, whatever it is that you want them to find relief, you have to just do something over here first. Human nature is, if we're at point A, and our goal is to get to point B, we wanna go from here to there, directly there, and just, just in this example, would be just touching him. What we have to learn to do is think more laterally about it. And what I mean by that is we need to come over here and take a pit stop at C first. And what C is, is more pressure. So I'm at A, I'm gonna to go to C, I'm gonna add a little pressure. 
so that when I go to try to go to B, B looks a little easier than C. That's the name of the game. <clears throat> the th and the theoretically, the more he accepts being touched there, the better he gets at it. Eventually, you could just walk up to him and, and go right for those places that are normally a little bit hard. So again, that was a little bit scary. Ryan's working that flag hard. Okay, he's, he, he chose to look at it. So now I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna pet him. And I'm using the, the stick and the flag here as an extension of my arm. You know, he doesn't go, oh, Ryan's got a flag. He, he just thinks of it as my hand is further under there right now. You know, we see a stick and a flag, but to him, it, it, I don't have to, it's the same difference. Some of you might be going, well, yeah, you can touch him with the flag, but stick your hand under there. You know, it's like, I will. <laughs> But I'm going to check it out with the flag first because it's safer. I don't want to get my head kicked in right away. Um, so it kind of makes sense, right, to just kind of set things up for success. But you can see I'm, I'm petting him there and he's okay with it. He's not in any pain. This is, he's an Arabian. He's sensitive. Um, you know, he doesn't really love to be touched there. Um, and so this is just a, just a little thing that comes up. And this, a lot of horses have these different places. You guys have heard of horses that are maybe a little ear shy, something like that. Well, it's like, well, this horse isn't ear shy, but he's a little bit flank shy. You know, he doesn't really love things touching his flank area, okay? So what I would do with him is for the next couple of days, I'm gonna always set him up for success by adding a little bit of pressure before I touch him in those areas with my hand. But then after a few days, I'm gonna start to experiment and see if I could do less first. Less with my flag, less warm up, less setup. You can already see he's not reacting to that flag as much, right? He's trying to understand it, trying to get comfortable. So I'm gonna release the flag, and now I'm gonna come back here with my hand. Let's see what he does here. Much better response. Oh, and he's even licking and chewing. Hopefully not biting. <laughs> Very good, good job, Truist. So. You guys can see we got some more work to do here, so we're going to keep at it. But I think you guys can understand the premise of what's happening here.